I'm Vanessa, the girl on a bike, and I'm here at Red Bull Romaniacs in Romania, the Carpathian Mountains. It is my first time here, and I'm gonna share on this video a little bit of my experience riding the toughest hard enduro rally in the world. I'm gonna be riding my Husqvarna TE250i. Let's do this, Romaniacs. Right, we're here for Romaniac sign on, and the first step is getting through some of the COVID hoops. So we're going to jump through them, and then hopefully we can get in, get our hotel voucher, and sign on for the race. Well, okay. We've got a little bit of a change of plan to the way that this video is going to go, mainly because of Red Bull Media House and some legal issues, but it does mean I'm actually going to do, hopefully, quite an interesting Red Bull Romaniacs video for you, because instead of just showing you the riding of Romaniacs, I'm going to talk you through some of the things that maybe you don't necessarily know about what it takes to compete and make the finish line of Red Bull Romaniacs. What I'm going to do, instead of having the ability to film live at the event, which I was unfortunately not allowed to do. I'm going to talk you through the whole journey of the five days racing in Romania and use some of my social media footage, which unfortunately is portrait from Instagram, to bring it all to life. So slight apologies for the portrait landscape vibe of this video, but hopefully it will all come together and make a little bit of sense. And cheeky little plug, if you're not already following me over on Instagram and Facebook, please do head on over there and get in the comments below and let let me know what you think about Red Bull Maniacs and this video. So stay tuned until the end of the video to find out which class I rode and also which position I came in. First of all then, we arrived in Romania. We flew in and we had our bikes transported by Desert Rose Racing. We had the accommodation package through Red Bull Romaniacs and so that was all organised for when we arrived. First step was sign on and inscription to the race. Now we had to jump through a few COVID tests, which for us was proof of our double vaccination. We then got a yellow band that enabled us to access the event having gone through those hoops. Hopefully COVID won't be around forever and so that won't always be relevant. We then had the sign-on process. So this is all done at the main hub for Romaniacs, which was the Ramada Hotel in the center of Cebu. And we had to go in and go to various different stations and get sign-off to make sure that we were ready. Sign-on time for Rebel Romaniacs. We've got a form of all of the information and we've got to go to loads of different desks and get everything signed off. So stuff like our GPS, our survival kit, we've got to have flares, getting our goggles. It's all happening and it's, it's pretty exciting. This included all kinds of things from showing that we had our race license. Now the race license is very important to uh, do your research before you get there. You can pay for one in Romania on sign on, but you might find it easier to get one back in your home country. So for example, I got an ACU license and a medical done in the UK before I arrived. You then need to have your survival pack. Now there is a list of things that need to be in this from flares and lighters and mirrors. When you are riding Romaniacs, you do disappear quite remote into the Carpathian mountains. And if you fall down into a valley, the organizers need to know that you've got the resources to keep yourself warm and signal to get their help. So the survival equipment is very important. Now it is actually quite a lot of weight. So there's things that you can do to minimize that weight on your body for the actual race. So for example, I put my two flares inside my airbox, making sure that the bike still had enough airflow. Oh, I did have a little bit of a rant about sign on subscription. We'll just play that one and let you uh, experience. Do I look like an assistant? Both, no, don't nod. Both Romaniacs check ins. They're like, oh, I presume you're the assistant. And I'm like, no, I'm riding. I think it's just because I'm a girl. I don't think there are very many of us. So, any girls watching this? Come on. Us girls can do this stuff too. Let's ride. Don't have to do Romaniacs, but we can still ride. Anyway, vent over. Step. Step. <laughs> right, the little black 
tag that I've got round my neck there, that is basically a lifeline for Romaniacs. It gives you access to all of the areas that are vital, so the start line, the paddock. It gives you your food voucher for pasta, which when you finish a day's racing is very much enjoyed. And it also gives you dinner access if you have paid for accommodation as food as part of your subscription. So it's something you have to keep with you at all times. We are getting some lunch. We're basically all ready to go. We've just got to do one last shakedown with the bikes. And I don't want to take this off. There's no turning back now. I'm registered. I am riding, racing Red Bull Romaniacs. <laughs> now, talking a little bit more about the setup of Red Bull Romaniacs, you have the main hub at the Ramada. You then have where everybody is staying. So some people are in hotels around Cebu. Some people will find their own accommodation. But the paddock isn't actually next to the Ramada like it used to be. I would say it's about a 10, 15 minute taxi journey from the center of Cebu, which actually was a little bit annoying because you're constantly having to taxi backwards and forwards. Now the paddock setup was a really big, dusty, grounded, industrial estate area. They had security on the gate, which you needed to show your little black tag to get in and out, and they had some port The rest of the paddock is down to you as a competitor and your team to establish your own little home as such. Feels like about 34 degrees in the paddock right now. Buddy is ready to go. Husband's ready to go. Wifey is ready to go. We've got our kit sorted. So it's definitely happening. We're ready to go. Hey, who wants to see what Romaniac's paddock looks like? This is it. It's basically a whole load of tents and race wagon, wagons and motorbikes and people all set up in their little groups. Tires all over the place because we're going to be using a lot of tires and uh, lots of preparations, busy bees running around. So yeah, Rocky Monster and I decided that we would go with Desert Rose Racing. They are very well established rally support company and they did the transport of our bikes out to the event. They then supported us through the event, getting our bikes from the paddock to the start line each day because sometimes that's a good 45 minutes away. And if you had to ride that on your bike, you would risk rounding off some of that fresh rubber, which you kind of appreciate when you're up in the mountains. And they also then did support for the race in terms of being at the service point in the middle of the day, friendly face to greet us as we came in tired and sweaty, changing our camelback waters, giving us some of our, our food supplies, and the mechanics giving our bikes a little bit of once over for any of the niggles that we might have through the race. And then the evening, a little bit more of a hands-on bike maintenance support, changing tires, etc. And then bringing the bikes back home to the UK. And we decided to go with a rally support team because there's a lot of unknowns when you do a race like Red Bull Romaniacs and going with a team that knew the lay of the land, what's going on, took a little bit of the the stress, I suppose, out of doing the event and actually having done the event, I think I would definitely still use them if I did it again, just because of how helpful it is having that support when you are exhausted at the end of a day's riding. Right, it's morning of day zero, the qualifier day, and I'm going to be really honest, I was feeling incredibly sick on this day. The nerves I had just kind of allowed to build up and snowball inside me. I had a lot of self-doubt. I was basically not believing myself. I didn't think that I could do it. I was scared I wouldn't even make to the end of the qualifier, let alone day one, day two, day four. And I was feeling pretty sick. I tried very hard to just calm my nerves and focus. I was there in Romania, so there was no turning back. There was no not starting on that day. And I just had to try and control my nerves. We're in taxi on the way to the start of the qualifier. It's pretty dark still because it is an early one. Not sure I'm feeling ready, but I'm yeah, just trying to enjoy it. We made it to like the pre-start line. So basically we're 19k from the city. We pick up our GPSs here, which are all loaded with the qualifying lap. We will be leaving here and we'll have 12 minutes to get to 
the, the actual start line, but because the trucks and wagons and support vehicles can't get there, we've got to ride up there, which is only 11 minutes away. And then we have a 10K loop, which has some pretty big warnings. Like there's a really steep bit with a sharp turn at the top. And if you miss it, then you're going to ditch. And then there's another hill that if you make it up that hill, you should feel more comfortable that you're going to make it to the end of the uh, today, not even the week. Um, I feel sick. <laughs> it's going to be fine. I'm just going to try and enjoy it and rate it five meters at a time. Buddy is looking far more chilled. Well, that's going to get confusing. I just walked up to Alex's bike. They look the same now. <laughs> Buddy <laughs> is looking far more chilled than me. riding Red Bull Romaniac, so I apologise. Please do drop in the comments, hit subscribe, all of that kind of stuff. Um, you can keep track of all of my competitor times on my, well, my profile, which I put in the description below. I'm feeling a little bit less terrified now about the days to come. I've got this, I'm riding Red Bull Romaniacs, done my qualifier. What better place to be riding, seriously, and racing, surrounded by people all just in love with the sport as well. That was amazing. Time to get ready for day one. A little bit of wind noise in that finish line video for the qualifier, so sorry about that, but in a nutshell, I didn't need to be as nervous and terrified as I was. The training and preparations that we put into this race that was actually okay. And I was starting to feel pretty ready for day one and the full let loose into the Carpathian Mountains. Had a nice little distraction after the qualifier as well when I was wandering around in the paddock and I stumbled upon Paul Tares and his T7 motorcycle. Now, if you haven't seen any of the coverage of him riding a T7, a big adventure bike in the bronze category at Red Bull Romaniacs, it's well worth checking out. He finished as well, absolute legend. And I got to meet him. Wandering around the paddock and I need to show you a bike that is racing in the bronze category. Yep, that is a massive Tenere 700 adventure bike. Paul Tares is competing in bronze. If he makes the finish line on that, he will be the first person to complete bronze at Romaniacs on an ADV bike. Seriously cool. I'm going to try and get a photo with him at some point, but just seeing the bike is impressive. Lots of people have asked me about food and nutrition and how on earth do you put on the calories that you need to keep riding for four, five, six hours, four or five days in a row. Now, this is something that's quite personal, so I can share what worked for me and Rocky Monster, my husband, but you'll have to work out what works for your body. Now, breakfast, we had a, a muesli oat based mix that was what we actually eat in the UK every day. So high carbohydrate and some proteins in there with nuts and seeds. We then put a collagen whey protein powder from you perform on it to give us a hit of protein with our breakfast and try and take on as much fluid as possible before the start line. At service points, we would then consume protein bars, active collagen from you perform, which is a real hit of performance, protein, energy, and the collagen, which is obviously really good for your recovery and a banana, something sweet and tasty and slightly refreshing. And again, trying to get in lots of water. Our Camelbacks had two liters and then they had electrolytes in them. ISO, I believe is the brand. And then mid morning and mid afternoon, we tended to have one of the 
carbohydrate energy gel shots and man they're good it kind of made me feel like superwoman each time i had one of those a really really good hit of energy finish line at romaniacs you always get given a pasta dish which was pretty yummy actually and very well appreciated after the day's riding and in the evening we tried to have a good volume of carbohydrates and also a good portion of protein to refuel the muscles and energy and again as much liquid as we could take on to make sure we stayed hydrated. Romaniacs this year we were riding in 32 to 36 degrees heat so the hydration was really really important. Okay Garmin setup this is an important one because without the Garmin you don't necessarily know where the finish line is however I will put a big high five to the track managers at Romaniacs because they mark it with blue tape and it was actually incredibly well marked but the GPS gave you a little bit of a head start or insight into the way the track was going. I decided to have a two Garmin setup. I had an eTrek 22 and 32 mounted on my handlebars on J mounts. And one of them was zoomed in at 80 meters and one of them was a wider view of 200. Now the combination of the two in theory is to enable me to see the bigger picture of where the track's going but then a closer up look at what terrain was right in front of me. Now being completely honest I probably looked at the bigger picture 200 meter one only a couple of times through the race so I think if I did it again I'd probably only go for one Garmin just remove the admin you do actually have to pay Red Bull Romaniacs an extra 35 euros to have a second Garmin so you save a little bit of money because you've got the view of where the track is going if there is suddenly a hairpin up ahead you can see it before the tape flagging and anticipate the turning to get the bike in the right position so it does help you keep a little bit more pace going and it was also a lot easier than I expected it to be to follow. Now there's lots of videos about how on the Garmin if you touch the screen it stops the self-tracking of the Garmin uh, i.e. you've fallen off and you've bumped the screen with your chest while you're stumbling around with your bike. So people have said about putting a little bit of pen over the steering knob on the Garmin. I'm not going to go into this in loads of detail. Uh, there's lots of videos on it. I did find that every so often my Garmin would stop tracking but I also found that it was very easy to hit back, hit go and get it back on track again and I didn't manage to get a little pen cover working. So for anyone worrying about that, I don't think it's too much of a drama. A bit of a surprise with the Garmin's was that when we got there, they took our Garmin's office because Romaniacs organize the whole GPS setup for you. You don't need to load tracks or do any of that. You just give them their GPS and in the morning before you start on the start line, they give you your GPS back loaded up with a track ready to go. That's because they want to keep the GPS top secret and they don't want us to know where we're riding in advance and go out and practice or people know, know the tracks publicly. But on taking that Garmin from you on day one, they just take the batteries out and put them in a bin. So reminder to anyone, you don't need to take batteries for your Garmins. They put fresh batteries in it every single day. Okay, a random little one going into this video. My trousers, these are Revolution Race. Every single time I've worn them, I get people messaging me asking what my trousers are. So I just thought I'd throw it in this video. They are GPX Pro trousers by Revolution Race. Yes, I'm a little bit in love with these trousers to the point that I think I have them in five colors. I am not sponsored by them, but they, um, they're a company that I really, really do recommend. And I've managed to persuade them to give me a discount code to give to you in this video, which will work for the next week and a half. So if you're interested in some of these, they're basically, I call them action pants, super hard wearing, great pockets. They have ventilation and they look really cool discount code down below. Okay, I totally forgot to mention the different classes and what class I did at Romaniacs. So it is set up into different options. You've got gold, silver, bronze, iron and atom. So five classes. Gold is the absolute extreme pro mental vertical madness class. The sort of terrain where I probably wouldn't even be able to walk up it, let alone ride a bike. So the Graham Jarvis, Billy Bolt, Wade Young of the world are doing that. Typically you get around 40 to 50 people in that class. You've then got silver, which is also vertical madness. And that is tends to be a slightly larger number of people. So I think this year is about 90 riders. You've then got bronze, 
a witch is the biggest category. I believe there were 250-ish riders this year. Then you have iron, which is the class that I did. And then you have atom, which is the easiest class. And I would say that atom is then a slightly smaller class as far as the number of riders in it. Bronze is probably the biggest class. The track that Romaniac set out is a big A to B each day. It starts and finishes in a different place every single day. And you never really know where it's going to be until the briefing that's done the night before, you then have to quickly organise, get into the start line, all that kind of stuff with taxis, which is actually quite easy. A good chunk of the route is the same no matter which class you're in. So there are sections where, as a iron rider, you're riding along and Sandra Gomez goes past you. Uh, it's pretty cool and it's incredible how fast those gold riders uh, hair it past you. But then each class will have sections and lots of sections throughout each day which is dedicated to the level of riding that they're riding uh, and for me as an iron rider i obviously wouldn't want to accidentally go down a gold loop because i'd probably die tracks really well sort of flagged with blue markers but we'd obviously then have our gps on our handlebars so i was following my garmin to make sure i stayed on the iron track so how hard was iron i feel as though the training that myself and rocky monster did before red bull romaniac set us in a really really comfortable position doing iron it's quite fast and flowy and enduroy but it does have some pretty cool multiple tricky sections throughout each day that gives you that hard enduro feel now the training that we put in meant that i felt quite comfortable and i didn't have i think there was only two moments in the whole week where i really needed pulling out of something i tried to ride smart like the jarvis school taught me picking my lines etc and I felt really comfortable in iron. The step up between each classes is quite huge. The speed at which the bronze riders were actually overtaking me was not intimidating, but it makes me realize how much work I need to put into my training to jump up categories. And the idea is that maybe in the future I might manage uh, bronze. I was very happy with my choice iron this year. The finish line, madness doesn't matter what class you're in. Right, it's race day number one. We're in the taxi on the way to the start line. Desert Rose have the bikes en route. It's about 45 minutes from the city. We've got our double Garmin's all loaded up with our route to follow for the day. And that is probably one of the most important parts that we know where we're going. So um, we have those. We've got an emergency map for if we have an emergency, we're not to open this. Um, I think it's got some top secret information. Um, I think I'm feeling ready. Uh, Rocky Monster will be starting about 40 minutes before me and then I will be setting off, focused and trying to ride consistently. It's getting close to start time. <sighs> I made it to the end of day one, Red Bull Romaniacs. Um, the scores are in as well, and I've forgotten it. 65th, I'm actually insanely chuffed with that because I'm not here to rank. Uh, I'm here to make the finish line, and I'm actually not doing that bad. Bit sweaty, bit covered in mud. Rocky Monster's here as well, also sweaty and covered in mud. That was mind blowing. Um, I'm buzzing, maybe from the energy fuel that helps you race, maybe just from the high of having finished, but yeah, Rebel Romaniacs day one, three more to go. Just had a finish line pasta, that was so good. I'm still absolutely buzzing. I need to try and like calm myself down so I don't use all my energy this afternoon. It was just so good. I just like all enduro on steroids. That's Romania made it to the finish line and so now i'm watching some of the other riders coming in we're all kind of spaced out throughout the day so it's not like the people coming in now are behind me or anything um, but in the usual style romaniacs have put kind of scary concrete step right on the finish line um can't really show you but it's there and uh it's a good finish line 
At the end of each day, we would go to one of the local washing stations, wash the bikes down. Kind of important just for the bike maintenance side of things. Handing the bikes over desert road racing, it's a little bit easier for them to make sure our bikes race ready for the next day. If it's not covered in mud, gives us the opportunity, of course, to spot things as well that might be damaged on the bikes. And it costs about two quid to wash both our bikes every day. There you go, fun bike washing chat. Bike wash time, ready for them to be looked after by Desert Road Racing in time for tomorrow's day two Red Bull Maniacs. So, uh, buddy's all done, and Alex is now on to his. We've got the Desert Road Racing guys sporting us with our bikes, and I've got to say, it is so worth it having their support. Buddy is ready to go. Um, had a few little tweaks from today and um, Alex is just going in for some tyre love. Feeling good just sorting our kit. We've got a bivouac night tomorrow night so we'll ride all day and instead of coming back here to Cebu to our hotel we are camping way up into the mountains so we've got to pack our overnight bag and then we get straight up on day three from the mountains and smash out another day of Red Bull Romaniacs. All happening, loads of smiles. Day two, on the way to the start line. Um, got a good night's sleep, feeling like I did a race yesterday, which is obviously expected. Um, I think we're ready for today. It's uh, possibly gonna be a bit of a wet day, we'll see. We're looking up at the mountains ahead, it looks rather dark. But, it's feeling pretty ready, hey? Hopefully, let's see what happens. Day two, Red Bull Romaniacs. I'm no turning back now. Day two is happening. Desert Rose Racing have dropped us off. We've got our bikes, they're all here. Yeah, where's Patsy? Whee! <laughs> and we're off into the mountains. Star lines over there. Ah, and Rappy Wadster. <laughs> um, I feel a little bit less sick than I did this time yesterday morning, so that's got to be a good sign. We have just had some rain. Um, just going to take it steady. The Red Bull Archway! I still can't believe I'm getting to ride through one of them. <laughs> is the big Red Bull inflatable. When you ride through that, you've officially survived the day. That was absolute madness. It was really cool. Quite a lot of flowy stuff. Quite a lot of stuff to trick you out. Um, some cheeky uphills and downhills and logs and rivers and streams and good Romaniac style day. Wow. Uh, I think we're riding four and a half hours. That's with our compulsory pit lunch. So I don't know what my final time is. Update you soon. Now for us, we found Red Bull Romaniacs a really, really enjoyable event. And I think a big chunk of that comes down to the preparation that we did before we got to Romaniacs, both for our fitness, both for our skill and making sure that we were pick picking the right class to ride, but also in our bike and kit preparation. We did a lot of work on our bikes to make sure that they were race ready, making sure that they've got all the right protection from radiator guards to um, having spare levers bolted on the bike and everything in really good working order. We then had a full spares box that we shipped with Desert Road Racing so that if anything could go wrong, we hopefully would have spares to fix it. Now, I think we both rode quite, what's the right word? We didn't have any major silly crashes, which was a really good thing. So our bikes actually did very well through, through the race. We personally got through two sets of brakes and two tires. It was a dry Romaniacs mostly. And so maybe we were a little bit lucky on that side with consumables, but we did have more tires and more brakes, etc., with us because you never really know how much you're gonna use. A day in Wales can use a whole set of bake pads. So in part of that kit preparation, we also prepared all of our food and munchies to have at service stops to have at the end of the day when we got off the bikes. 
all of our oils and chain lubes, all of the clothing that we were wearing. We had multiple kits each. I think I rode two kits through the week. And I think, Alex, did you wear two kits as well? Yeah, two kits. Again, it was a drier Romaniac, so that probably helps on, on the kit side. Wore the same boots all week. I actually wore the same set of goggles for four full days. Now, Romaniacs will give you a pair of ride Ride 100% goggles, which is one of the race sponsors. I chose to stick to my Scott Motorsports goggles because I find them just far more comfortable and superior goggles because I've also got infinite optics, scratch proof lenses on them, and I knew that I could wipe away and not get scratches. But if you wanted to, you can get a fresh pair of goggles from Ride 100% at every single service spot. Into the mountains, bivouac marathon stage. It's the first time Red Bull Romaniacs have thrown this in and we really, really enjoyed it. The night that we had in the bivouac was completely transport admin, getting to paddock, getting to hotel, all that kind of stuff free. We got off the bikes. We did some spannering servicing on our bikes. So what did we do? We changed the air filter and you'll see in my videos in a second. And then we just chilled. And as you'll see, we even got to sit in a lovely river. Right, the bivouac, I'm gonna give you a little bit of a tour. So first up, this is where the bikes are parked. I think this is called the paddock. Um, obviously there's no mechanical support or anything. We can only use what we've carried today to sort our bikes out. So I'm about to put a new air filter in the bikes. Alex is putting some new rear pads in his. Um, and then I think we're actually in pretty good shape to go and try and relax. And I'll show you the next bit of the bivouac. It's been my first time doing a race with um, Garmin, GPS navigation so I've got my two mounts up front and I don't have the garments in there now because Romaniacs whisk them away from you at the start and finish line um, so that they can load up the maps and keep things a little bit secret as far as the routes but I am um, I'm so pleased with the I think it's an e-trax 22 and 32 that I'm running and it's a lot easier to navigate at the speed doing this train than I thought which is quite a relief so doing some bike repair, Alex has a kinked brake hose. So we've reinforced it and now we're putting some cable ties and also some wire lock around it. Um, we've got our little Teng Tool Enduro Stand tool roll, which we've carried all through the race, but particularly important for the bivouac days because we need to be self-sufficient. Um, we've also done chain tension, new air filters, um, fastened up some of the bolts that have come loose, just done a kind of a little general once over, put some new brake pads in the rear because the front are all good. I'll show you. There we go. So some fresh ones in and I think that's probably us about done. Um, time to then sort us out and put our tent up for the night. Okay, so basically the car park is quite a long walk from where we get to stay. There are showers and toilets. There are loads of tents. Um, we bought our own tent. There is a beer tent and food. Ready for food. This is how to wash after a hard enduro. Oh, that was really refreshing. Uh, dinner time is quite exciting. It's absolutely boiling. Just been trying to have a nap in our sauna tent. Um, I think I've seen more men in boxes today than in my whole life. <laughs> it's a really cool vibe though. Um, we've got music going on cold stream, cold showers, and laundry everywhere. Dinner done, now in the tent. Rocky wants is just about to get in, somewhere there. Ready to sleep, recharge for tomorrow's racing. 
Something worth mentioning with the bivouac is the preparation. There were a lot of people at the bivouac who hadn't necessarily packed what they might have enjoyed having at the bivouac. Now, for us, there are a couple of things that I think were important, and that is your toothbrush. Now, the bivouac bag has to be handed over to Romaniacs the day before the night that you're staying in the bivouac, which means you need two toothbrushes to be able to have a toothbrush in your hotel and a toothbrush on the bivouac and anything else that you want duplications of. So for example, for me, I quite like to have my mascara and my makeup, which is also one worth mentioning. Lots of people always ask, how does my mascara and my makeup never budge? I use a MAC mascara and an Estee Lauder foundation. They don't budge, they're brilliant. Um, so that's not really much of a secret. And my eyelashes are real, they're not fake. Just for the record. We loved the bivouac. I just think that was an amazing addition to Red Bull Romaniacs. I look forward to doing the bivouac again and camping with my bike in the Carpathian Mountains. Sleep, it's a really obvious one, but Romaniacs kind of try and do everything they can to make you tired and sleepy. They do quite late briefings. The campsite at the bivouac had really loud music. Really important to get your sleep. For me, having a face mask to block out the light and earplugs helped me get enough, enough sleep to really recover and heal my muscles for the next day. So really try and get your rest. The sun is starting to come up now so you can see me. Um, I've just been putting my game face on and I'm about to get kitted up. I think there might be sunrise soon. Over there, there we go. Yeah, wow, that looks... Looks like it's going to be a nice sunrise. Breakfast time! So there's a tent and food. What's that? Up? We've got a sausage and bun. Right, we've finished with the bivouac. We've now got to go back to the park Ferme for our bike. Freaking Romaniac style. We've got to walk through a river to get to our bikes. <laughs> I'm in the GPS queue. So each day our GPSs get loaded with the track. I've got two Garmin's that I'm running. I'll try and show you the setup, but I'm only, I've only got them from the start line to the finish line, so it doesn't give me much chance to, to show you, unfortunately. But they are processing a several hundred GPSs every night and new batteries, etc. Right, this was day two on the start line, and what you can see is a little pipe going into my mouth. This is my Liat hydration pack, and I have a nipple, that is what it's called, that goes into my helmet and comes through to my mouth. So it means that I can suckle on water as I'm riding without having to use my hands at all. It's actually the first time I have raced with the in-the-mouth piece, and it was fantastic. At no point across the five days did I feel thirsty in any way because I was able to keep on top of my hydration. On the midday service point, trying to take on some calories, and some protein, water. Really good. We're now kind of halfway through Romaniacs. I think your, your body definitely starts to notice that you have been doing some long, hard days racing in some tough terrain. So I was keeping on top of things with my complex massage thing, which we both used on each other, and then also keeping up on the nutrition, the active collagen, etc. Sleep was very important. I've said it already, um, but it is, it is a tough race and it does start to take a toll on your body. Fuel! There are no petrol stations in the Carpathian mountains but there are when Red Bull Romaniacs is on multiple times throughout the day you'd pull into a checkpoint and there'll be a row of water bottles about this size filled with petrol and also the option to get pre-mixed oil petrol for some of the older carb two strokes you basically just pull up under your cap they give you the bottle you pour it in give it back cap go uh, super quick fuel stops pretty cool who I met at the fuel stop Casually refueling the bikes. Guess who rocks up behind me? Yeah, yeah Manny, and he's done really awesome today. I haven't seen the times, but you're feeling good, right? Feeling pretty good, yeah. Feeling good. <laughs> ah, it's so cool, this place. <laughs> There's some awesome riders doing stuff like Red Bull Romaniacs. It's, it's very inspirational to actually get to meet them in the flesh as well. And they're so friendly and happy to say hi, which makes it even more exciting. Tent options in the bivouac. You can pay 50 euros and hire a tent. The tents that you could hire looked pretty good. They were sardine packed in. We decided not to spend 100 euros between the two of us to hire a tent. And we took our own and our roll mats and our sleeping bags 
really comfortable. Tents are so easy to put up. Oh, this river was absolutely incredible. It was super cold mountain water and we just sat in it for about 20 minutes. It was like a cold ice bath on my hip. Revitalized the body. The showers at the bivouac are actually water pumped straight from the river, which means they were very cold showers, but in the heat that we were in in those mountains, it was actually lovely. I didn't complain. I had a good wash, washed my hair. They gave us a little reusable towel. Thumbs up for me was got rid of the sweat and the mud from the day. Day three finish line. Oh my goodness. You are, you're about to see the video of me coming up to the crowd pleaser that Romaniacs put at the end of day three. I was terrified. I just looked at it and I just, I didn't believe that I could go over it. I, I could see everything going wrong, me falling in the river, not making it, crashing, the spectators were everywhere. And I just sat there and it felt like I sat there for about 10 minutes. I think it was more like 10 seconds. And the only way to the finish line was over that obstacle. So I had to, had to do it. Made it over the ramp and I didn't die. Um, some really fun fails if you uh, YouTube some of the highlights from day three on that ramp. Lots of people going into the rails, the flowers, the wall, the river, but I didn't. Yes! basically did what Romaniacs do best. Killer finish line. Um, that was terrifying. A wooden ramp above a river with a few hundred people watching. I stopped and the crowd screaming got my adrenaline up enough to just freaking go for it. And I did it. Uh, the rest of the day was awesome. It was a little bit trickier today, which was really fun. Um, had a couple of off. Uh, ate lots of dust. I'm buzzing. Day three! Woo! Romaniacs. One more day. Got my pasta! That's like the, the tree on the end of the finish line. I just um, stuck my head in a river to cool down. Hence why I look like a drowned rat. Oh, I'm buzzing. That was such a good day. I'm gonna sign out and eat this. Mm. You're probably getting the daily routine now. It's now back wash time. Washing Alex's bike down. Look at this. What? <laughs> oh my goodness. Romaniac. Back in the paddock. Buddy is being looked after. Every time I, uh, Bye, Joe, over there. Patsy has just made me a cup of tea. I'm having some protein refresh. <sighs> so good. It's morning before hotel breakfast at the moment. Uh, we've bought our own concoction of oat muesli uh, with the extra collagen and whey protein powder to give us. We know we feel good on it when we ride at home, so we brought it with us here. Why mess around? Um, but the volume we're needing to eat it on. I'm nearly there. I feel like the naughty kid with my breakfast. I'm trying to eat, but it's early, and I guess I'm pretty tired. Uh, how am I feeling about today? Mm, that is a good question. I would say I'm feeling ready. I'll bring it on Rebel Romaniacs but <laughs> I'm terrified for the big famous hill at the end. And I know in my class I don't have to go to the top, but I've still got to ride part of it and then quarry to the finish line and the finish line obstacle the Romaniacs normally like to throw at you, which is tends to be some kind of horrendous man-made object. No idea what it will be. Um, I've got to try not to think about that until I get to it. So it doesn't 
distract me. For now, I'm gonna make my seal. Come on. Finally got a moment to show you the GPS. Now, this is really important because without this, you don't really know where to go. They do mark the track, but you don't get much warning of sharp right angles and hairpins. So having the GPS mounts is awesome. I've got a double mount um, and this one is zoomed in at 80 and this one is a wider picture at 200 so it enables you to see right what you're on but also a bigger picture of what's coming up so you can kind of keep your flow going. I've got the Garmin E-Trex no, uh, 222 and 32, you can tell I'm on day 4 racing, not much brain power. Um, and they get a little bit dusty as you ride, you give a wipe, reset your maps. They've just been fantastic. It's been easier than I thought it was going to be, so that's always a bonus. I'm going to stop talking now. Let's see it calm before the storm. We're in the pits, or well, the paddock. Um, desert road over here, bikes are ready. I'm feeling less ready now, my hips. Last day push. Right, morning of day four was a pretty tough morning for me. The hip pain that I manage and live with was really starting to feel a little bit more intense. It was day four racing and I could really feel that in my body. I, um, I was hurting, but I'd survived three days. One more day, would I make the finish line of Red Bull Romaniacs? Start line nerves. Yay! <laughs> Thank you. Last day. Last day, finally. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Roughly midday through the day, you'd get to the service point, and we met Desert Rose racing at each of those. They had their little setup. They immediately took the bikes, asked us if there were any issues with it and focused on that while Patsy then supported us with changing our camelbacks, giving us some food and making sure that we sat down. It's a 20 minute compulsory stop. So everyone, even the Billy Bolt and the Graham Jarvis has to stop for those 20 minutes, take on some hydration and breathe before carrying on with the rest of the day. Day four, service point, still alive. Still being looked after by Patsy and Desert Rose. Getting camelback refresh, trying to take on some calories. I've got a lot of time though. Do you think it's fine? So I'd made it through 98% of Red Bull Romaniacs. And then it was the finish line of <laughs> day four. The crowd pleaser that Romaniacs put in. Oh dear. So Grant from Java Signature Tour Wales ran out onto the track and was like, right, Vanessa, you've got two options here. We well, you don't, you've got one option. The ramp. <laughs> there was a seven foot ramp that just spat you out onto some grassy, rutty ground, or you had a row of concrete bollards and a ridiculously deep bog swamp. And he basically said to me, Vanessa, you're going over the ramp. Remember what I taught you two weeks ago with the car and Jarvis? The whoop and land. Whoop and land. You're just going to do that over the ramp. Inside, I am dying. I'm wanting the world to eat me up, take me further away. Um, but I'd made it that far. I had to get to the finish line. The crowd was screaming and going mad. Unfortunately, I haven't managed to find a single video of me going over this ramp. Uh, so I could blag that I nailed it and did it perfectly, but you know I'm always honest. I didn't. I forgot the what bit. Went off the top of the ramp. Front wheel got a little bit heavy and I landed on my front wheel slightly more than my rear, which meant I fully compressed my front suspension. Quite a hard landing. I then got bounced backwards as the suspension kicked in and at that point, pulled on the throttle and so accelerated forwards, kind of went sideways towards the crowd. The crowds were like ah! running backwards as I hurtled towards them. And I just kind of apparently gracefully landed on my side, picked the bike up and made it to the finish line. Um, but it was quite a hard landing. So I have actually pulled a muscle in my arm. Uh, I'm still waiting for full diagnosis of that. So stay tuned on my socials to see what's happened. But I don't really care because I made it to the finish line of Red Bull Romaniacs.
finish line was ridiculous. I'm hoping there's some videos of that. Um, my worst fall of the day was on the finish line. Um, oh my goodness. <laughs> I feel broken now. Fuck up the vibe. Time to get more water. That is the ridiculous ramp that I went over at the end. Okay, we made it look easy. I've never learned to fly, so I gotta say, that scared the life out of me. Oh my goodness, a guy just rode along the ramp. I love this, we've got Grant of Jarvis Signature Tours, Wales, on the finish line. So if you want some tips back in the UK, Grant's the guy to go to. That's where I rode with in, in Wales a few weeks ago. up here in the paddock desert road racing and patsy quick and joe dell all here they've been absolutely amazing all week massive five stars for me for their service don't tell them that because they might get a big head but i would i would use them again um buddy i think is already already loaded up to head back to england our kit's all getting sorted um so we better go get some dinner because i'm quite hungry and we fly back to england tomorrow morning the mud has washed away. We've just stopped in the middle of Cebu to have some dinner. Check out the sky right now. How beautiful is that? We're still alive as well. Romaniac finishes. High five, Rocky Monster. <laughs> so where did I finish? That's probably quite an important question. Now, I didn't go to Romaniacs to try and rank. I went to Romaniacs to race against myself, to race against the terrain and to make the finish line. And I'm pretty chuffed to say that I actually didn't rank too badly. I came 57th in 96, which um, I'm, I'm, I'm mega chuffed with that. Yes. Anyway, onwards with the video. Now I'm wearing the t-shirt. I think I've been home for a week now and I'm still wearing the t-shirt. It's getting to the point where I probably need to wash it, but I'm really, really proud of myself. Seven and a half years ago, I got hit by a car and had life-changing injuries with seven surgeries over seven years. It was only just over a year ago I had my most recent hip surgery. I learned to ride off-road since the accident five years ago and I've just done Red Bull Romaniac. So I'm 
I'm really proud of myself. It was tough, it was muddy, it was sweaty, but it was also the most invigorating, challenging and exciting event I've ever done. Where do I sign up for more of them? I'm Vanessa, the girl on a bike. I really hope you've enjoyed this slightly unusual video about Red Wall Romaniacs. Now, some of the riding footage that is in this video wasn't actually footage taken during the race because I wasn't allowed to. The riding footage was similar terrain to the racetrack that I was able to capture whilst riding with Java Signature Tours Romania the week before. Now there is going to be a full video of that trip coming out shortly. But just to clarify, to the Red Bull Media House, if they're watching, it wasn't race footage, so no legal suits, please. Please hit subscribe. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Get in the comments, let me know what you think. And thanks so much for watching.